Throw it up, West Side. One of my all-time favorite memories from Edison has to be the games. The games, the rallies, um, we were the livest, we were the most competitive, and we were all in tune with the beats. Um, at the games, uh, we were all chant, what, what was it? E.T. E.T. Ooh, ooh. E ooh, ooh. Hey, some of the famous things or exciting things that Chief will say in the classroom or goose egg, um, see you at two, five, and five, seem like somebody got big love for someone, um, let me get the tissue, um, also stop that half step. And we had a wonderful uh, classmate, um, Dennis Murray, that was a comedian. He would always come in the classroom dancing, acting silly, and one of the steps was half stepping. And Chief would say, hey, 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 stop that half stepping. <laughs> Notebook check. And I'll see you at two, five, and five. Okay, some of my fondest memories were like cheering camp before I became this great rebel. I remember, you know, we cheered our ninth grade year and traveling with the girls and seeing them, you know, it was fun because our ninth grade cheering squad, we needed a lot of help. But we made it through, you know, our mascot, Forever Tanya Haynes, we had a lot of fun. And, you know, there was the soccer and always the basketball games, they rocked you can never miss a football game. The place would be Edison High School football games Friday night, live. My most uh, memorable athletic moment uh, for the senior year in Edison football. Uh, I took the football from the, the Sanger quarterback and ran it in for touchdown for Edison defense. Go Tigers. I think I think the only rival we had really to me was Columbus West at that time. They had some good players. Um, when we went when we played them at Columbus West, we barely beat them. I think we beat them by six. They came to our house, we destroyed them by twenty-two. You know, so I think that was our biggest rival at this point. I have to say, my most memorable song in high school was "Boys in the Hood." Uh, because of a particular summer memory after we graduated after the city county uh, all-star football game Heather Laura Kisa and I cheered in that game and Carmen Smith hung out with us a lot and so after that game we went home and we were cruising down Cedar in Laura's white car and windows rolled down blaring that song we used to be jamming Boys in the hood are always hard. Come talking that trash, we'll pull your card. Knowing nothing in life but to be legit. Don't quote me, boys, cause I ain't said shit. This is one of my favorite songs. <laughs> Playing basketball at Edison was um was an honor. I remember watching Keith McDonald, Tim McDonald, and a whole bunch of other guys and um it was family tradition. It was like the baddest of the bad go to Edison. If you couldn't play at Edison, you got those guys that transferred. So I wanted to play with the best. So that's why I went to Edison. I hooked up with Andre Sims and he made me a great player. Mr. Smith, Chief, he was my favorite teacher because he used to always kick Carmen out of class. <laughs> <laughs> I used to like this. I used to what did he say? He, what did he, he say? What did he he say? just go like this. Get out! <laughs> Do you have a crush on any teacher or staff member? Uh, yeah, Miss Lyons was fine as fool. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was. I mean, I think about her now to this day. It was just like, it didn't make no sense being that fine, you know, to be honest. So Miss Lyons was fine as hell. And, you know, it was hard to concentrate just, just walking past her class and seeing her, to be honest with you. She was just ridiculous. And then, um, uh, you know, Miss Bellamy, you know, because Miss Bellamy had, Miss Bellamy had it. And what is it? You know what it was. 
you know, rest in peace, Mr. Anderson. I just recently heard he's no longer with us. You know, my uh, prayers and best wishes goes out to his family. But I remember him the most because, you know, he and I had the most difficulty. And I say difficulty because uh, <laughs> on, on the days when your jerry curl wasn't ready to be public, those are days that I was going to wear my hat. And other teachers didn't really mess with me because they saw the jerry curl wasn't twisting the way that it was supposed to twist. And it wasn't curling and bouncing behavior. And so when I go into his class, which was geography, he wasn't having the hat. And I wasn't taking it off. So we was just at a at an impact. It wasn't going to happen. I'm not taking this hat off. This girl's in here. All right? And he wasn't going to give up his power and make me tell him what I wasn't going to do. So a little bit of ranking, you know, some funny things get said. They say I'm bagging this. So I just look like, you know, a hard head, uh, no go to school, no getting grades type of fellow in his class. On those days, you know, and that was once every... I was once there a couple months, unfortunately, but that's who I remember the most because I realized that he was a good teacher, wanted me to, you know, respect the institution of learning, um, but, you know, don't mess with the Jerry Curl, man. It's, it's just serious business. You know, let's just be real. It was serious business at that time. We're talking 84, 85. I wasn't taking off the hat. Anyway, moving on, moving on. Hi, my name is Oweda. Um, in high school, you knew me as Dumpy, although nobody calls me that anymore because I'm too old. But anyway, um, so um, one of the adults who impacted my life the most at Edison had to be Mrs. Mary. She was our um, one of our counselors. And I just remember that when I um, always, she was very classy, a very classy lady, always well put together, but um, when I was sent over to Germany as a foreign exchange student for the summer, um, she and her husband sponsored a portion of my trip, and I just thought that was so phenomenal, and back then it was a lot of money. I mean, it's a lot of money now, but it was a whole lot of money and, uh, in 1986, whew, lifetime ago. But anyway, I think that just her care and her compassion is what um, made me just, uh, she had such a huge impact on my life. And then um, also Mrs. Lyons, who was over the Outrageous Tigers, uh, just how her creativity, her faith, she made sure that every time we practiced, every time we performed, that we always prayed before um, we did anything. And so that was really uh, influential in my life. The other thing about her, too, that I thought was phenomenal is after we had um, been a part of Outrageous Tigers for a while, she brought Joy Wells into um, the Outrageous Tigers like a little after us, if I remember it correctly. And I just, he used to play this old guy. We had a scene about him and him and Wanda doing this, these old people in the rest home. It was so funny, but just to, for her insight to be able to see the giftedness in him, to give him the opportunity and to see how years later his career took off in comedy is phenomenal the influence that adults have in the lives of young people. I wrote a, uh, she told us to do a, like a 10 page paper. And I did a 10 page paper and it was, I was in a like murder she wrote that Angela Lansbury. And I did a 10 page paper of how to kill the English teacher. Oh, oh my God. Right? So it was really good. I got an A on it, right? The next thing you know, I'm going to the principal's office and my mom's sitting in the office. And I'm at Mr. And Mr. Newsom sitting there, and I'm like, what's going on? You know, and they tell me, they show me this paper, it has an A on it. I'm like, what? What's wrong? And they said, well, it says how to kill an English teacher, and she felt some sort of way. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, was <laughs> I was in Mr. Smith's class, and um, we were a rowdy bunch, and one day, 
Charlie Ross. Yes, you, Charlie. You got a wet paper towel, balled it up, and threw it at the top of the roof right over Mr. Smith's desk. And you guys, you, Andre, Bernard, all of you sat back there and you just laid back. And I'm watching this wad. I'm like, it's going to go any minute. Right on his desk. He finally calmed us down to do our work. And when he looked down, it fell. And I bust out laughing. I couldn't control my laughter. As you guys know, I'm always goofy. And guess who got in trouble for it? C'est moi. That means it's me and French. And I had to go to the office. And I got blamed for it. And Charlie, he was like, I don't know who did it. You're a liar. You did it. And, oh, I just wanted to kill you that day. Charlie, I'll never forget. <laughs> what didn't you guys know about me in high school? That I thought our girls were the most beautiful women on the planet. These were the Edison Tigerettes. I mean, they... I'm, I'm black and gold through and through. So, Mary Weinholz, Renata, um, Michelle and Vonay Ford. I still call you Vonay instead of Vana. Leslie Hornbeek, Laura Meyer, Renee Laney, um, the Tiger of Forever Eternity, our, what do you call it, mascot, Tanya Haynes. Um, that's what it was for me. I admired um, Rasheen fairly because he was such a smart student. And Julius Tennyson. Real, I mean, just very smart. I, 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 I admired it. It was focused of uh, willing to help. I'm always knowing the answers and just helping me when I needed some help. Very kind. Mm. Rasheen was just, uh, hmm, just smart. He was just a smart. Oh, it, it just it, he just had it. He, it, 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 it didn't know. It didn't matter uh, when we was in science. He just knew all the answers. I, I used to be like, what? <laughs> What all of them didn't? I, I don't know if he was studying back then, but he was just smart. We were we was goofing off, and he was like, "Rosalind, did you do your homework?" I was like, "No." He said, "Come on over here. I'm gonna have to help you." Aww. Always, always, he always knew all the answers. I, I mean, cause we were some we were some rough kids. We 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 wasn't we wasn't studying no. We weren't doing the homework. We weren't doing the homework. But he encouraged you. No, he encouraged it. He he encouraged us. He helped us with our homework as well. He's Rosalind. Y'all better start doing your homework. I was like, Rashid, I want to do the work. You do some work, do some work. <laughs> I was like, Rashid, I ain't doing no work. He said, yeah, you need to do some work. Thank you, Julius. Thank you, Rashid Fairley. My funnest memories, the Outrageous Tigers. Ricky goes to school. And before I get into that, I have to say, you know what, Miss Lyons, I'm going to, right now, I'm going to just come clean and I'm going to come forward with this. Something you didn't know about. Me, Ricky Chapman, um, Mark Hullen, and I think it was Frank Bess. In the script, in Ricky Goes to School, there were a few lines that belonged to some of Richard Pryor's stand-up and Richard Pryor's um, uh, uh, albums. We just cleaned it up and we made it suitable for everybody. But that was one of my funnest times, getting up you know, with the Outrageous Tigers, especially when, when we were in jail. And uh, Latanya Haynes was the uh, uh, she was the uh, this uh, you know the the warden, and Frank Best says, "Come on down to cell cell seven. I'll make you feel like you in heaven." She said, uh, "Shut up, or I, all y'all gonna get seven more years." <laughs> <laughs> oh, Weta Turner was uh, we had went and it was a scene that where me, Frank, and Rick we robbed J and C House of Records. Oweta Turner was the uh, cash register. She was at the cash register. If you guys look on that, I gave her a good sock. Before I did that, she said, what are you guys doing? I told her, get you some business. <laughs> and when Brian, <laughs> Brian Young came out as the prostitute with the high heels and the wig, with Crystal Lane and Latanya Hayes, <laughs> and then Mark Holland said, come, come. Algebra. His name was a his name was a prostitute named Algebra. How the hell do you have a prostitute named Algebra? You know what? It started uh, in Miss Lyon's room. We just started writing our own plays, and um, we just turned it into comedy. You know, and it was a drama thing. But it was it was started a group of us. 
we all had one thing in common, and that was we all had a sense of humor. And we put it together, and she allowed us to write our own, you know, write the script, but she directed it. Um, and like I said, you know, we had to put a little Richard Pryor in it, but cleaned it up, you know, and, you know, if my mom and if Aunt Audrey, you know, if you guys are watching that, I'm so sorry, but you guys didn't know anyhow, so it don't matter. So, but that, and that's how it started. And I got involved, and it was, uh, it was something I loved, you know, just, just, just making everybody laugh was something that we did. And I think that uh, all of us, you know, we were really good at, you know, making people laugh, you know, and that was, that was, that was a highlight of, of, of my senior year right there, I think, just being with the Outrageous Tigers. Okay, so I'm still connected to Latanya Iverson and Wanda Dixon. We, um, I still see a lot of others, but uh, I hang out with them. We go places and do things. But I remember one time when, uh, well, all the time, <laughs> when me and Wanda would go places when we were in high school and we'd go places on the weekend and come in real late, like 1 to 2 o'clock in the morning, and we go in her house and she'd be trying to sneak in the door. she unlock the door and open the door and her mom be right there and she'd be like, boom, 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 beating on her head like this. And Wanda be like this. <laughs> it used to be so funny. It used, I used to be scared because every time we walk in the door, we walk into that. It used to be, so we, I used to be cracking up. She was someone who, it was like, have you ever seen the movie um, um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off? <laughs> she reminded me so much of Ferris Bueller because you just never know how your day was going to go with her. I just want to uh, also shout out and thank you to Oscar Haynes for being an amazing history teacher and also uh, just a great male figure in a young kid's life in West Fresno without a father. Uh, He's an amazing track coach, just an amazing man. And for that, Oscar Haynes, thank you. Uh, my name is Jacques Comier. Uh, I went to West Fresno Christian Academy, where my mother was my teacher and principal. Uh, actually, I did that from K through eight. So that's my elementary school and my middle school. Uh, and, you know, I'm a tiger for life. So went to Edison from 84 to 88. Um, Loved it. Uh, made a lot of made a lot of friends, uh, a lot of contacts. Uh, so this is this is where it all, this is this is where it all started. Okay, so this is how you would get the claw if you didn't make people laugh or your joke wasn't good. You would go. Mm -hmm. uh, who did I hang out with? Well, you know, and you know, hanging out is something that's funny, right? So you got your immediate click, which is usually two or three people, then you got an expanded click, and then that expanded click got a click. So my primary homie, which is probably just two of us, actually two to three, right? It was Scott Walker and Marlon Reeves, and, you know, because we was kind of like church boys, you know what I mean? So we, we kind of hung out together. We was church boys, but we was into it, you know what I'm saying? I was trying to, you know, be a B-boy and... You know, Scott was trying to do his thing and Marlon Reeves was preaching even back then. But anyway, we was a clique. And then our expanded clique was uh, Richard Lewis, uh, Mark Hullen, Jamal Galloway, uh, Dennis, for rest in peace, uh, Smitty. Uh, uh, you know, for, I, I can't remember what brought us into a little fold, but I know that between Dennis Jamal Galloway and Richard Lewis and Mark Huller, they was like the comedians. And so as long as you was in that clique, and how did I, how I forget out my, you know, one of my main partners I hung out with, got a lot of game from, was Clifford Williams. You know, rest in peace. I just found out recently that he's no longer with us. But uh, uh, that's, that's kind of who I hung out with. Where did we hang out? It, it's been 30 years, but... Um, you know, you know, every year you claim a tree. You did? <laughs> so I remember it was the tree that was over um, not too far from uh, Mr. Ratcliffe's class, but in front of Ms. Lyons' class. That was freshman year. And then, you know what I'm saying, I was trying to, you know, I was uh, floating around right then. I was trying to rap, and, and then we had the white boys, provost. And it was some, you know, we had some hard neck uh, 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 white boys at the time 
We used to play fist, meaning, you know, hit each other, hit just, we spend lunchtime hitting, hitting his fist or their fist as hard as I could, and it was their turn to hit my fist as hard as they could. My favorite teacher, that's tough, you know, Mr. Ratcliffe was my biology teacher, you know, as a freshman. I learned a lot there. Uh, one of the best classes I ever took was Mr. Gosh Garian. Yeah, he was a, a angry, you know, he seemed like an angry old man, but I can't tell you how far that class learning how to type took me. You know, uh, so glad I took that in high school. Uh, let's not talk about math. Let's not talk about English. Even though Ms. McCurry, I don't know if anybody remember that name, she, you know, I ended up, you know, later on trying to write and publish. And I remember it was some of the things that Ms. McCurry taught us. She was, you know, she kind of let us use rap, uh, you know, to try to teach us poetry. And so uh, I thought that was pretty cool back then. So Ms. McCurry, she had a big impact on my life, I'd have to say. One of my favorite classes was Spanish with Mr. Cutter. Who can forget Mr. Cutter, Colonel Sanders? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Cutter's class was so fun. Every day you come in and it was Spanish right at the door. Hola, como estas? Muy bien, Senor Cutter. Como esta usted? Another memorable moment from high school was the prom. And I don't know if y'all remember, but I went to the prom with Kenny Coleman. And he was just a funny guy. Kenny was um, just a really nice guy. We had he, we went to prom together. We went we hung out at grad night together, and he is just someone that will always hold a special place in my heart. He's deeply missed. Who impacted me? The librarian. Do you guys remember who our librarian was? Miss Bellamy. I would come in there some days like I can't do it. I can't do it. I've had enough. I can't do it. She would pat me on my back and say, baby, you can do it. Just pray. What do you need help with? Miss Bellamy was always there for me. I love you for that. When I first came to Edison, um, um, we tried to hear from Fresno High. It was, you know, it was a little reserved. I wasn't sure. The only people you knew here was the soccer guys. You knew some other guys. But when I first got here the very first day, I remember it was Pat Foster. And he goes, twins, what's up? Glad you're here. We're going to win a valley. And I knew then at that time that we were welcome. We were loved here, and we were gonna, and it was gonna be good here for us. And I, and I never regret a day um, coming here for those two years. Not only you know to win soccer, but really just to kind of um, embark the the Edison Tiger uh, spirit. My proudest moment here at Edison while playing soccer was in 1987. We played NYL Championship. We beat Bullard, and I think that our defense was just stellar that game, shutting down them, and they really couldn't. Have, I think we beat them two or three nothing, and they had scored a lot of goals, but we just came together, stuck it to him. And you know, we had a couple guys, you know, like to talk a little bit. You know, one guy who liked to talk a little bit, he's sitting in that, in that corner right there. He was kind of quiet but talking. Marlon. That's right, Marlon. And he would and he would he would talk and it was hear him talk and it was funny, you know? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what happened a lot of times these players would talk, they wouldn't give us no respect. And you know, and but at the end of the day, you looked at the final score and that was our respect. I hung out with Roslyn, my cousin Sharnice, Sharnice Jones, Diana, Ned Green. We all hung out just uh, outside of the office, just west of the office near the parking lot. We would meet there every day for lunch. Mrs. Marie, she taught me to study, think deep, uh, think beyond, and come up with ideas. I was class clown, however, I am shy. I'm a shy person. So why did, why did you get voted class clown, do you think? I think being goofy with my, my friends, probably the most goofiest. I actually started playing soccer when I was in, what, the third grade or so? Uh, and I'll say it was, it was a challenge. You know, third grade, not knowing even how to kick a ball and didn't even realize that I was fast or whatnot. So I would sometimes run past the ball <laughs> as a little one. But um, 
as I became older, I learned the game a little bit more, the fundamentals of it, and um, realized that it was more than just a game. It was one of a, one of my favorite passions that I had about you know um, sports or whatnot. But um, growing into soccer more, um, I chose. I actually knew how to play basketball as well. But since they both ran into the same um, time during the same season. I always chose soccer over basketball. So moving into high school was like one of my favorite times of um, actually playing soccer because I had a group of wonderful girls that were with me. We all supported each other through the good and the bad. Michelle Jennings, her and I both played center forward. She was on one end in the center and I was on the other. And it was challenging one game where we didn't think we were gonna get it, but. Somehow her and I pulled together. We somehow got the ball towards the goalie and we were like passing the ball towards, you know, her and back and forth, me and her back and forth. And she either scored or I scored, I don't know, but we ended up winning the game because we thought we were gonna lose and that was a great moment. If I had any advice to give to my teenage self, it would be to go to class, stay in class, go to college, stay in college, learn all that you can. There's a time and a place for everything. And when it's your time to go to school, do that. It's very important. It will help you. Your decisions and choices that you make today will help you on your life later. I've always been really proud to say that I was the um, first, one of the first two valedictorians of the first graduating class of CompuTech. Um, and it sounds really nerdy, but um, it's something that uh, brings me a lot of pride. And who was with you? Catherine De Leon was uh, my co-valedictorian and my best friend. One person who was not really my teacher was Mr. Harris. Um, rest in peace. I found out from his daughter that you know, on Facebook that he's not with us. But Mr. Harris is part, is part of why my name got changed. He was at this school giving me books that don't necessarily go with this school, but that gave me me. This is Veneer Smith. I would like to wish uh, all the participants in the 30-year class reunion. I hope that you all have a wonderful time and uh, enjoy yourselves. And don't forget, dive right in. Peace. <laughs> hey, friends. It's your boy Tiger Lee here to let you know it's official. Westside.